Hey folks, welcome to Fails and Flails. Today in this video I'm going to be doing six more puzzles, this time specifically for doors. If you enjoy it and want to see more, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're not already as I put out videos every single week. Now let's get rolling. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. For door puzzle number one, your players come upon a door and see that it has multiple knobs. Now if you do this in your own game, you can have more knobs or you can do less, but for this example I'm going to have five. Of those five knobs, one is covered in soot, the other one has a static charge that your players can clearly tell if they get close to it, the other one is covered in frost, one is in the shape of a skeleton head, and the fifth doorknob looks very old and decayed. For this door puzzle, there is one of two solutions, and the first one is that there is no solution. Whichever doorknob your players choose to open the door with is going to cause some sort of negative effect. If it's the doorknob that's covered in soot, then it's going to deal fire damage. If it's the lightning one, lightning damage. If it's the frost one, cold damage. If they decide to open the one that's shaped like a skeleton head, then it summons skeletons. And if they choose the one that is uh, old and decrepit, then it's going to magically age them. However, your players can minimize or completely eliminate the damage. For instance, if they pick the door that magically ages them and an elf touches it, then it has no effect because they can't be magically aged. If they pick the door that deals, or the doorknob that deals fire damage, and they have the tiefling do it, then they, at the most, they take half damage, and if they're a rogue with evasion, then they take no damage on a successful dexterity saving throw if it's an AoE effect. The other way to run this puzzle with having a correct doorknob is to have a number of corpses in the room equal to the number of doorknobs minus one. So they may find that there's a corpse that's been frozen, one that's been electrified, one that has been magically aged into death, but there's no corpse that has been burned, so therefore they would know that is the doorknob that's covered in soot, that is the correct door that's not going or doorknob that's not going to hurt them. For door puzzle number two, as your players come up to this door, they find it to be a living, breathing, and talking door that demands a sacrifice in order to let them pass. However, it's not too picky. Sure, your players could offer one of themselves as sacrifice, but to avoid a player death, they could also offer a creature that they summon, maybe an ally NPC that they have. If they're smart, they may be able to kite or draw in a monster from a different part of the dungeon and offer that as a sacrifice. Puzzle door number three is fairly straightforward, but may give your player some trouble. This one has been experimented on by probably a bored wizard. When your players walk into this room, they will see the door on the opposite side. When they go to walk through it, they will find themselves re-entering the room that they had just left. In order to get past this puzzle and therefore onto the next room, they need to exit back through the door that they initially came from, and then they will find themselves in the next room of the dungeon. For the puzzle door number four, your players find themselves in a dwarven mine, a dwarven ruins, or any other sort of dwarven setting, and this part is important. As they come up to these two sets of doors, one of the doors will yell out in the goblin language that it is trapped and that they should use the door next to it in order to avoid the trap. However, the spell on this door is just to keep pesky goblins out, and is the door that it is telling them to use that is actually trapped. Door puzzle number five is a perfect fit for the party's bard because it is a musical puzzle door. As your players progress through all of the previous doors in the dungeon, a single musical note will be played out loud that they can all hear. When they get to the final door in the dungeon, it will ask them for the password. The password is going to be the string of the previous tones that they heard, which they must sing or hum out loud. Of course, if you're not running a linear dungeon, it could be a little bit troublesome for the players to figure out the order of the tones, so in that case, you could have each of the doors marked in some sort of order as well. And of course, they can go back to the previous doors to walk through them again to have the tone played again. And finally, door puzzle number six is another living, breathing door, and this one likes riddles. When your players come up to it, it will tell them that they can only pass if they present it with a riddle that it cannot solve. However, it is not very good at riddles, and no matter what riddle they give it, it is always going to answer incorrectly, but it is always going to state that it is correct and say how easy the riddle is. To get past this door, the players must tell the door how smart it is and compliment it in saying how no matter what riddle they come up with, they'll never be able to think of one that the door can't solve, in which case it will let them pass, feeling very good about itself. That's all the puzzles for this video. I'll be coming out with some more in the near future here when I can work some more up. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment down below. If you're not subscribed, again, consider subscribing as I put out videos every single week. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great day.